They really do. I mean, like, we can go downtown. Like, say we can go downtown. Oh, talking about downtown. I don't care. World of Beer. I don't care. We have been going to World of Beer since they put one here locally for us. Okay, right? But yet, you got people in there who work behind the counter. First of all, you're a bartender. So I know you ain't making that much. So let's just be bartenders and serve waiters. And they don't, no, nah, you ain't making that much. Like, not that, saying that it's, you know, not saying it's bad. That, you know, and, but it's the way yeah, you, you treat, treat me. People. Now, you're a white woman behind the bar giving me a service. But yet, you looking at me all crazy because of the color of my skin. Yeah. Now, let me tell you where we live at, y'all. We live in Northwest Florida. We don't live. East like my Alabama. We are near the Alabama state line. So a lot of racism and where we live at happens on a daily basis. And I'm telling you, I've been subjected to it a lot of times on previous jobs. Huh. Cause I had to leave a job because a boss called me a stupid motherfucker loud enough for other customers to hear, her to hear, and her mother to hear. I had to leave. I'm like, no, this isn't gonna work. You're not gonna talk to me this way, and I'm working 12 hour days for you and only getting one day out the week off. Hear what I'm saying? You have to realize that when people are treating you differently because of the color of your skin, not because of your character, not because of what you bring to the table, not because of your ethics, your experience, your morals, none of that shit. People are judging you based off the color of your skin. These folks, these folks be talking, and I'm they be talking. talking. Like, you don't, just, yep. you don't run that thing. As long as you don't, you know, you put your hands, hands on me, me, you're going to get your ass whooped. I'm sorry. Y'all yeah. say Floridians crazy, stand, that's why. Stand your ground. <laughs> Stand your, you stand your ground. You're gonna stand your ground, yeah. and I'm gonna stand mine. And Somebody's gonna get their ass beat. I don't care. Like, and it's and, and that stand your ground law, y'all here in Florida is some bullshit. It's some bullshit. It's very tricky, and it's really and truly for it's the white it, person. Yeah, yeah, for the white That's person. That's who it's for. You can you can be riding through a neighborhood. If they see your ass and they think you trespassing, they can shoot you and say they was that stand your ground shit. Oh well, I was just standing my grounds. No. You fucking profiling me because I'm black and I'm riding through a neighborhood that you think I don't belong in. But you're wrong. Yeah, so. And it's the same thing. Like, again, like, downtown here where we live. Like, we don't live in downtown, but we're not far from it. But it's some big time justification going on. It's been going on for almost the last year. I used to live down there years ago before my mom left. And they're knocking down a lot of the old homes. Now, yes, some of them need to go because, yes, they're older, dilapidated, and they're not being occupied. But some of them... They're trying to overprice them or buy them out just so they can knock it down, put these condo townhouses that barely even got a fucking yard. It's probably a two by four. Like, um, <laughs> Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. That's exactly what like, it looks they like. like um, if you ever seen um, Cat and Hat. <laughs> oh, yeah. They look like those kind of houses. Like, you're yeah. trying to move all the black people out, you know, to make the north side. You know, yeah, to match the east side because yeah. see, the east side here is a mixed neighborhood, and a lot of people over on the east side of town where I grew up on, they own their homes, so no one's moving anywhere. They got enough thing coming because <laughs> them black folks they're not going they're to not move out of those houses unless you have a good price for them. So most, some of them houses that that's, that's down there. My grandmother lives down there. She will not sell <laughs> that home. She ain't that house move. is that house is. That's a nice it's ass a house. house, but then, and then they, they're not gonna move. Mm -hmm. Like no, so it's just like <laughs> you, you do what you mind. want. You know, you can build all these houses and all that kind of stuff. But the black person is still going to be here. The Asian person is still going to be here. The Filipino, <laughs> Vietnamese, everybody's still gonna be here. That's why. That's why I keep smiling because no matter <laughs> what they try to do, no matter what. You can't keep a black person down. You can't keep no. You can't keep no no other race down. You cannot. You yeah. really can't. And that's why I tell black people: if we come together, <laughs> boy, we'll be a force. If you're brilliant enough, brilliant enough to use your mind to be able to put up a corner store, or you brilliant enough to, I say, it, be a drug dealer, or if you're brilliant enough to do whatever, you should be smart and brilliant enough to come to with your brothers and sisters. Try to make us segregate from each other. You yeah. Know, and all that kind of stuff. Because they don't want, they know if we do, this is just going to be too powerful. Hmm. It's going to be too powerful. You mean we need to come together? Yeah. Like that's all you know, that's all I got to say. Yeah. Like my 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 word is bond, you yeah. know. 
and, and I guess you ain't, oh, you ain't bonding, you know, and all that kind of stuff like that. This is going to be the outcome. Yep. It's going to be more police killings. It's going to be people just stacking they can just raid your house, you know, yep. and all that no kind of warrant. stuff. No warrant. Your car. It's going to be people, it's gonna be people that <laughs> call you niggas, hmm. you know, and all call you, call you wetbacks and all that kind of now stuff like that. I've been calling niggas before. Yeah. And, 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 and <laughs> it's because we let them lose, make us lose our focus. We let them feel yeah. comfortable in saying that's the problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they I feel told, too comfortable. I told my friend, my white friend, they know not say nigga. You ain't even got the right we, to. You only know parts of the nigga. First of all, I ain't got time no. for that. No, no, I mean, I'm not your nigga. No. I'm not, you're not my cracker. So exactly. it's like, hello. You know, respect me and I'm respect, respect you. you. You know, sometimes, you know, and I'm just speaking for me. I can't speak for Babe. I can't speak for Alexa. But I just feel like sometimes for black people, they're like, we don't get what we deserve, you know, and I just feel it's because we don't use our voice enough in the right way because we get so emotional. Like right now, I'm getting emotional just talking about it. But, you know, like sometimes you have to put your emotions on the back burner to try to get to the bigger change, to what it is that we're all really trying to accomplish. So that we all can be greater and do greater as a country, as a whole. Because that's another thing with black people. We don't, we're not trying to be different. We're not trying to segregate ourselves off from nobody. If anything, we embrace a lot of people. I find a lot of people do that, but with the way that things have been happening, it's starting to segregate again, and I just want to be real, y'all. I don't want to see that. I don't want to, if we have kids, that our kids go through stuff like this. Like, I don't feel that it's necessary, and I don't feel that it's fair that those of us who don't use our voice complain, too, because if you're going to complain and not be a part of trying to create something better for the future of not just our own culture, but for just people in general for it to be a better world, then, yeah, you're just as much as a part of the problem because you want to complain behind closed doors, but then you don't want to use your voice. You're afraid, and we're all afraid, but how many years have we been afraid? I'm not about to be afraid, and I choose not to be afraid. So, yes, I know sometimes Alyssa gets upset with me, you know, because I can get, you know, a little upset about things, you know, or sometimes like I might see something that someone does and I might get upset about it. And see, like Alyssa says, you know, she doesn't try to be a hothead. And sometimes for me, it comes up that way, but it's because I'm just passionate and I just love us. I just love being black. And I don't think that it should be something that we should be ashamed of, that we should be taught to be ashamed of. And I feel that once we start talking to our children and letting them know that, yes, you are beautiful, you are strong, you are smart, that you can be anything up underneath the sun and stop just telling our kids that we can be basketball or athletes in general. It's so much more out here that our kids can be. Stop trying to put them in this bracket to make them think that, oh, because you're black, then you're just good for sports because you're fast. Fuck that. We can be black and have a fast mind and do some other stuff and be creating some other stuff. We need that. And I think that once we share that and teach that with not just people of our age, but the younger ones and those that are going to come after us, I think that will set the you know, precedent for things to start to change. And I know people now are doing a lot of change. And I'm so happy about that. And again, with Colin Kaepernick, like that was big for a man to do something like that, to sacrifice his career. And y'all gotta realize this man got a whole family and kids. So he's not just doing this for him, but he's doing it for his own children. That's a big sacrifice to make. Yeah. It is. And a lot of people may not understand it. A lot of people might think he was stupid or whatever the case may be. But I stand by that like and again it's not always easy doing the right thing and you know and a lot of us just want to be comfortable but you being comfortable that's why you ain't changing that's why you're not growing that's why there's nothing changing and growing for us here in america as blacks as african americans as people of color because we won't use our voice we want to be mad be mad but channel that in a in the right way so that way your point can get across and then things can start to change I was still working full time. Now, mind you, y'all know I wear my hair usually in a puff like this or some nice twists. I always put some jewels or something in it. I had on a nice <clears throat> blouse, a silk, whatever kind of material blouse, and my skirt and some nice shoes. You can tell that I didn't work there. You can, it's very clear. But because we're black, we were the only blacks that were still in there at the time, and all the other people that was in there using the washers and stuff like that were white. When this couple came in and this man saw me, you know, I just thought he was going to ask me a general, general question. He literally came up to me and asked me, could I get him change? Now, see, initially, Alyssa couldn't understand why I was so upset. But I, but 
it triggered me because I'm like, how dare you? Now, like I told you guys, we stay in Northwest Florida, close to Alabama State Line. Like, we're real close. And the only reason why he walked up to me was because he thought that I worked there. Because I'm black. You thought that that's all I'm worth is to work at a laundromat. And you think that I'm going to be this dressed up to the nines for a corporate job to be working at a laundromat? Now, yes, he doesn't know I work at, was working at a corporate job at the time. But the simple fact is, I wasn't dressed for the fucking job. And that's because I was upset. And I told that man, I said, don't you, I said, how dare you come up to me and ask me for change? I said, do I have a badge on? I said, do I even have an apron on that look like I even work behind the counter to fold clothes? And then let's know. That's why she left because I said it just like that. Too. I went off. I'm sorry. <laughs> I heard you laugh. <laughs> like, I did, y'all. Like, it really, it, it set me off. And I wasn't even expecting to get that upset, but it needed to be said. Because apparently, he had been doing this for too long. And the right person had to say the right thing to him. And I told him, I said, don't you ever walk up to someone in the establishment because of the color of his skin. To be his I was. That man was scared. That man was scared. But I wanted him yeah, to know and to understand. Yeah, they, they be, they, they be tripping they here. Off, but then they be making it. It's just, they fun at the same time. Yeah. They really don't like the slave days no more. No. Like, and I told that don't man. just sitting down and just not doing anything about it. You're I'm not, not your man. Debate with people all the time. You don't have to take stuff so you know hard all the time because some of that shit you know sometimes people don't think you know and it's just not some of it is not coming for racism or anything like that you really have to determine what's racist and what's not so it's just like but black folks you don't have to be so emotional no you don't, you don't. have to be so angry and all that kind of stuff like that you have a right to yell to be angry about stuff that's going on right now but don't let your emotions come out first yeah you know sit and you know and 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 think about it first before you act on it yeah so it's just like you know don't you don't have to you don't you have your own freedom of speech. If you feel like speaking, speak. If you feel like being quiet, be quiet. Yeah. You know, but, you know, don't let people just walk all over you. That's yep. it. But, like, you know, you being high. Black people are <laughs> typical to high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, cancer, and all that kind of stuff. Like, then you with your, you know, your spirit ain't right and all that, you know, that stuff can happen. You know, don't yep. let these white folks come out here and just make you upset yeah because it ain't they're not even worth it like <laughs> if you come home to your own peace i mean because they ain't they, they're not at home and they own peace you know yeah. so there's something that you have that they want so with that being said you know just be you yeah be you because you got because you can yeah Cause you can be you please don't be, be afraid y'all please i just i just you know i just see i just, and i just it's just it's no need to I don't be afraid. Think black people are afraid. I really think they're just being cautious. And that's that's that that is Well all. some are being cautious. Yeah, you yeah, right. Some are being cautious, you know, just like But some are know, afraid too. Yeah, but all right, y'all. So that concludes today's video. I just really wanted to come on here and talk about it. Um, you know, just being black in America, my thoughts, what's happening, what I feel we all can do to just be greater and better, and to uplift and to just help us to just become even greater people. Cause I already feel black people are fucking amazing. I think we're just awesome and that we're just beautiful. And I'm not bashing any other race out there because again we're all beautiful but i just need for my black people to know that you are beautiful we are all beautiful we're smart and intelligent and we all deserve to have a place here in this world all right y'all so thanks so much for hanging with us and we'll see y'all in another video bye Peace.